Yes, we have. Sorry, I should have remembered that. We need to stop the recording and start it again. Uh, thank you, Malcolm, for um, being more clever than I am. So we move on to the next session, which is the monitoring and testing session. So from now on, uh, all the uh, sessions of this event will follow the same setup. So uh, in each session, we will have short presentation or presentations. Then we will have a panel discussion with experts. And at the end, we will have the questions and answers. And uh, I see that we get some questions in the chat. Uh, please do use the Q&A because otherwise it's hard for me to keep track of, of the questions uh, if there is a lot of things going on in the, in the chat. So it's really helping me if you could do that. But our next topic is monitoring. Um, and the fact that the EU is actually monitoring the implementation of the web accessibility makes the, the directive special because that is not happening uh, everywhere. So as uh, mentioned by both June and Alejandro, the member states have for the first time ever uh, monitored using the same methodology and uh, they have monitored more than 10,000 websites and apps covered by the directive. Uh, and it is probably the largest monitoring exercise uh, ever made, I guess. So uh, there is a common monitoring methodology that is described in one of the implementation acts of the directive. But as you mentioned, the methodology uh, is, creating, is created bearing in mind the differences between the European countries. And therefore, it allows for a certain uh, flexibility between countries. So the member states have reported the results of their first uh, uh, monitoring to the European Commission. And if you read those reports, you realize that they differ quite a lot. So it is hard to compare. Um, and I was happy to hear that June said that the report of the review will be published shortly. So let's see how, how quick that is. Anyway, in this session, we are going to let the monitoring agencies from three member states describe their approach to monitoring and share experiences. So in the following panel discussions, we are joined by Sofiane and Milan from Inclusion Europe to complement the monitoring perspective with the end user perspectives. So I am curious about how has uh, monitoring been carried out and tested and uh, why was that approach uh, used and kind of positive or negatives, negative effects on that. So we start with Portugal. Jorge Fernandes, who is the leader of the digital accessibility team at the Portuguese Agency for Administrative Modernization, I think, AMI. Um, That's right. <laughs> so, uh, Portugal, uh, you have created kind of your own automatic tool for, uh, for monitoring and also tested internally with end users. So that's your approach. Can you tell us a little bit about how that came to happen and, and what the results was? Hello everyone, good morning. Uh, happy anniversary to all of us. So let's uh, open a little bit the, the cake. <laughs> um, well, about let me uh, start with uh, some short information about our agency. We have the national authority responsible by the monitoring. And uh, um, let me start with a novelty, which uh, might be interesting for the debate also, uh, that put the, what is the position of the monitoring authority in the public sector body structure. And uh, um, the, at the moment, the supervisory ministry of our agency changed at two weeks ago. So now we belong to the Council of Ministers, not already with a supervisory of a specific ministry to uh, spread the word to other ministries, but uh, more a uh, transversal body to all ministries. Uh, and this could be a, a new great opportunity to the accessibility in, in Portugal. So about the monitoring, uh, our legislation mentioned a process of uh, three different kinds of um, uh, evaluations. Uh, automatic evaluation, we, ha we have a, a strong uh, automatic evaluation in in Portugal. Uh, we have 
uh, we build uh, our tools, but the legislation said that uh, the entities can use our tool or any kind of tools that is available in the market. Uh, a second uh, step in our legislation is the manual inspection based in a, a checklist in our case of 10 critical aspects of functional accessibility. And the third step is the usability tests with people with uh, disabilities. Uh, the, 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 two, the first two uh, are uh, mandatory, so the automatic and also the manual inspection. And the third one is uh, a recommendation, uh, so the usability tests. Uh, each entity is responsible for the uh, entire process, and the results of these uh, are publicly available in the Accessibility Statement of each website and app. So we have an Accessibility Statement per website and per app. And centrally, uh, in our unit, uh, the monitoring uh, process have uh, two kind of processes. A light process that we check if the machine readable uh, format of the accessibility statement is okay. Uh, we check if the output results of the evaluations present in the accessibility statement uh, make sense. And we briefly compare these results with what the entity declared, uh, totally uh, conform, partially conform, or uh, non-conformed. Uh, we tend to believe in the declaration expressed by the entities in the, in the accessibility uh, statement. So this is the light process. And we have also a strong process, a strong procedure to uh, monitoring. And in this procedure, the entity apply for a seal or a badge of excellence with three levels, the bronze, the silver, and the gold. Uh, what are the difference between the, the strong and the light procedures? So in the strong procedure, our team um, certify in commerce. So certify is, uh, I think in all countries, very difficult word. Uh, so we give the approval uh, to all the data present by the public sector body. So in the bronze, that means the, the website or the app is compliant, but is a site um, more uh, informative. In the silver means that the site is compliant, but uh, more transactional uh, interaction user interface, have forms and things like that. And the gold means compliant, but is a site or app which was tested with users with disabilities. So in this uh, strong process, we uh, make some uh, certification of the information that the uh, public sector body, um, public in the accessibility statements. That is not only the automatic evaluation, but also uh, based in manual checklists that we have uh, to these uh, three levels I, I mentioned. Uh, at the moment, we have some of the results. The results are, you know, uh, a weak results, but at, this is information of today. If we public, if we consult today, the Portuguese Observatory of Accessibility, we see that we have 55 accessibility statements, 32 of them uh, declared 
totally compliant, 15 declared partially compliant, and eight declared non-compliant. Uh, this is the auto declaration of the public sector bodies. So uh, the strong uh, procedures that have the badges, uh, we have 16 accessibility statements with badges, eight of them with gold. So these eight, they used uh, user testing with people with disabilities and they public the, the report of these studies. Uh, eight silver. So this means that he's a transactional uh, website or app, in this case, websites. And we don't have a bronze um, badges at, at the moment. So this is my first <laughs> statement to give you a, a few notes about our, our procedure. So thank you. Thank you, Jorge. That was really interesting to see that you're actually kind of uh, giving a price or a reward to um, public sector bodies that are using users. So that is, I think, really connects to what Alejandro says that you, but it's it's mm -hmm. good that you kind of give them a gold medal if they use uh, use the users in a, in a good way. So that's, that's really an interesting approach to this, I think. So thank you, Jorge. We will get back to you in the panel. Uh, I'm sure people have mm -hmm. more questions and I have as well, uh, but we will move now to, <clears throat> to Hungary and uh, Dr. Sanet and I will not be able to pronounce your last name. So could you please introduce yourself because I don't dare try. It's such a beautiful language, but, but really it's too difficult for me. But anyway, you are the head of department of the um, Department of Compliance and Security at the governmental agency for IT development in, in Hungary. So the monitoring agency of Hungary. And you have used automatic and manual testing as well as tests with a variety of assistive technology. And the reason I think Hungary is interesting is that you also report to have been using a, a lot better or a broader uh, scope of assistive technologies, for example, switches, which is uh, uh, a little bit less use used in the other member states, which the most of them only tested with screen readers. So please. Let me know how to pronounce your name and <laughs> happy to hear your presentation as well. Thank you very much, Suzanne. Good morning to everyone and thank you for the opportunity that I can present Hungary's monitoring methodology. My name is Janet Asumiskolci, or the way we pronounce here in Hungary, Asumiskolci Janet, because first we use a family name and um, as uh, you already introduced uh, the Hungarian, also very long named uh, monitoring public sector body, I am the representer of the short name Kifu. Uh, first, for you to understand why we involved such uh, a hybrid uh, manual and automatic uh, testing methods. Uh, you should also see that uh, how many of public sector bodies uh, belongs to the scope of the web accessibility law in Hungary. So we have approximately 4,900 public sector bodies to monitor. And uh, according uh, to the act, we have to do yearly uh, 270 simplified monitoring. 24 in-depth and 16 mobile application. So Hungary is uh, 9.6 uh, million uh, inhabitants. So that's how the, the numbers uh, came up like that. We here in our organization uh, have five internal house experts. So with me together, six, we are responsible to execute uh, the web accessibility task in Hungary. For now this year, and that was the first year, we haven't uh, used or asked for any help outsiders, so uh, external uh, contractors. So we did all the annual testing by ourselves. As Susanna mentioned, we have that kind of hybrid uh, uh, testing method. 
which mostly uh, it's manual uh, testing, but we also use some automatic uh, tools. Beside the screen readers, we also use some web accessibility evaluation tools. Uh, and uh, we use them firstly to check the structure uh, of the website and mobile application, and also the contrast. And for the mobile application, we use the already also mentioned uh, switch control and switch uh, assesses. And um, we used to have an on developed automatic tool for simplified testing but truth to be told, and the efficiency of the results wasn't uh, such a high level we expected it. Uh, so this checker, we called it checker, uh, don't use it uh, again, but uh, we developed another um, software also with our internal experts. It's called ANIA and it helps uh, to the administration work. So it's, a, it's an administration tool. We can enter the result of the testing and monitoring. And at the end, as an output, we get the report about the, the testing and about the failures of the, or the accessibility errors of the website and mobile application. And uh, we also attach uh, so-called uh, development schedule where in where all the developed uh, accessibility errors are listed and this is the, the small package we send to the uh, controlled or monitor public sector bodies and uh, we use of course the WCAG uh, requirements but we also understand that this for those uh, public monitoring uh, bodies could be a little bit difficult to understand. So we never repeat the exact uh, requirements from uh, the guideline. So we created also template sentences, which explain uh, the nature of the error. And we also give uh, the solution how to correct it. And what we try to give them as a plus, uh, uh, is the consultation uh, possibility. So all the public sector bodies wants to improve their uh, websites or mobile application can consult with us and even we can give them the solution and we can join to their team to help them to, to improve. And as for the recurring sample, and I also will be curious how it goes in another member state, for recurring sample, we choose the methodology that we only focuses on already previously funded errors. So we don't check them as a new one. We only focus what we already uh, invented or, or found in the mobile application or websites. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, kind of in-depth walkthrough in, in just a couple of minutes. So I, I know it's hard to describe the whole monitoring methodology and your specific approaches in such a short time. I, have, I probably have given you an impossible um, mission here, but, <laughs> but that was very interesting. And, and also to hear that um, the way you, uh, you work also with, and I think that goes for many member states, but still I think it's rewarding to hear that you are supporting the public sector more than policing them. So I always think that is the, to me at least, that, that should be the best way to, to improve things. So now let's hear from Croatia. Uh, will I dare to try to say Marko Kovacic, <laughs> the advisor of the Commissioner of Croatia. Uh, Thank you very uh, much. I hope that you can hear me. Yes, we hear you. Oh, Welcome. Yes. First of all, happy anniversary to everyone. And uh, I really hope that uh, this meeting today will provide us with some uh, fruitful uh, conclusions and help us to conduct our uh, uh, monitoring functions uh, better and uh, also to uh, provide for the better accessibility of uh, web pages in all our countries. Uh, at the beginning of my discussion, uh, I would first like to point out that uh, since the very introduction of the uh, uh, Web Accessibility Directive in creation legislation, 
and we passed our accessibility legislation in 2019. Um, uh, we uh, were uh, very concerned with the expecting a monitoring task. I think that this is uh, something that uh, most of uh, monitoring bodies found uh, to be uh, uh, very challenging and uh, probably uh, uh, spend quite of time uh, talking about what's the best uh, what's the best method to do it besides the uh, I mean within the within the framework that has been introduced by the uh, methodology. Uh, so uh, in preparation of the actual monitoring, uh, our sample was um, 175 uh, pages for simplified monitoring, 15 pages for uh, uh, in-depth monitoring, and 10 mobile applications. So uh, the sample was uh, rather rather small. Uh, we have uh, actually expected for some time that uh, the European Commission or uh, any other institution from the European level will provide all the countries which have to perform the monitoring with uh, 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 the same uh, uh, same analytic tool, same automatic testing tool, which will then provide uh, instead of the jungle of the results that will provide us uh, uh, with uh, some comparable comparable results, uh, so that that we can see actually to what extent. Uh, the the web pages in uh, in in our countries are uh, worse or better than web pages in the in the other countries. So that can we just uh, uh, place ourselves? Uh, unfortunately, uh, such uh, uh, automatic testing tool for the level of uh, of the of the whole uh, EU has not been uh, devised, not not delivered. So we have to think about. Um, what kind of uh, monitoring uh, approach and what kind of uh, monitoring tools we should uh, uh, we should select? We have a lot of discussions with uh, our colleagues from uh, Central State Office for Development of Digital Society. Uh, we also talked with the relevant institutions uh, which are active in the field of the, of the digital accessibility in Croatia. So this is a uh, uh, Creation Academic and Research Network and the University Computing Center. And uh, most uh, important of all, we have, uh, uh, since the very beginning uh, of the project, uh, we have uh, established uh, uh, exceptionally good uh, uh, relation with uh, our national umbrella organizations with of uh, persons with disabilities. We have two such umbrella organizations in Croatia. One is the Association of the uh, uh, of the uh, Croatian Association of the um, uh, uh, People with Disabilities, and the other is uh, Croatian Associations of uh, Blind and Blind People. Um, we, uh, uh, th there are main stakeholders, there are main beneficiaries, and they are basically our seal of approval for everything we we, we do, and uh, we really uh, we really appreciate their opinion. Uh, during all these discussions we had, uh, we have uh, found out uh, the, the advantages of disadvantages of manual and automatic testing. And uh, um, after we considered all these advantages and disadvantages, uh, we have decided to go for manual testing, uh, which will be concluded uh, by two persons with disabilities. So we wanted to focus on a, a, a real user experience. And uh, uh, the way uh, the way the people with uh, uh, disabilities uh, feel uh, the, the the usability of of, of certain web pages and, and mobile application. So uh, these results actually reflect the true user experience. Uh, of course, um, uh, they used assistive te uh, technologies for for um, assessment of each of the pages. So uh, they used uh, uh, screen uh, screen readers and VDA uh, screen reader uh, talkback. Uh, certain uh, criteria have been checked by uh, W3C markup validator. So it's not it's not that it was, uh, and I think I don't think that it is uh, really possible to 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 use uh, to to uh, to measure the, the the usefulness of of certain web pages just. Uh, Without using of the uh, of of any assistive te technologies or, or or automatic testing, so uh, basically uh, we are happy with the results. 
Um, it was uh, uh, very uh, time demanding because, uh, as I said, our, our sample is not uh, is not big, maybe compared to other countries, but still, uh, it was a lot of work for 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 two people. Uh, um, and uh, most important for us is that uh, we have the results that are, that are checked by the users, that we have the seal of approval of the uh, national organizations of people with disabilities, and that we have we have uh, we have obtained uh, their support in the whole uh, in the whole process. And um, I'm really grateful for that. So that's that's it for now. I muted. Thank you very much, Marco, for this uh, very nice walkthrough also of the um, uh, creation setup or, or approach to the monitoring. And now I would like to welcome all three um, member states um, monitoring agencies. And also I know Ivan Peneva from uh, Croatia will also join in the panel, I think, who is from the Sector for Security and Coordination of Digital Society Development at the Central State Office for the Development of Digital Society. All these names are so long, um, but we are also joined in the panel um, by two uh, good friends from Inclusion Europe. So the umbrella organization for uh, people with intellectual disabilities, Sofiane El Amrani, who is the easy to read and advocacy expert at Inclusion Europe, and also Milan Schwerepa, who is the director of Inclusion Europe. So, so welcome everyone. And I wanted to uh, start with asking you, Sufiane, uh, based on the examples that we have heard now on how three of the member states are, are approaching monitoring using tools, using manual testing and using end users and assistive technology. What would you, uh, what do you think is the kind of the perfect approach to monitoring? What would you think from your perspective would be the best, the best way to do this to get a good result? Hi, good morning, everybody. Uh... So from my point of view, I think people with intellectual disabilities should be involved in the monitoring of the websites to see if they understand what is being written about. For me, the best possible to approach to monitoring should be done by checking to make sure all websites are easy for all people with intellectual disabilities to use. I also think that all websites should have a smooth way for all people with intellectual disabilities to find the information they are looking for. I think we should come together and work to make things easier for all people with intellectual disabilities. That's a good that's a good start for this <laughs> for this debate or or dialogue. I don't think anyone will will argue against you, but that is really imp important. So what would you say, uh, Shanette, you were a little bit into being interested in what other, how other member states do. What, what would you say, based on these examples, I mean, these are really uh, fast walkthroughs of the monitoring methodologies and so on. But if we focus on kind of automatic manual and end users and, and assistive technology, that kind of slice the way we slice things. Um, is there a perfect way or, or do you have to do it differently in different member states? So what, what, what do you think? Um, I think that uh, all the member states have to find a perfect way because we do attract many, many possibilities we tried because uh, we started uh, 2020, so we have now two, almost three years uh, experience about web accessibility testing and monitoring methods. And uh, I know we have a very long way to go and we are almost... I can say still beginning at uh, on on our road, um, and uh, uh, we try to get the best practices and the best solution from another states. But we should focus the Hungarian environment and the Hungarian conditions, and for that to find the perfect way. And we here in the house have two uh, blind colleagues. And as uh, an end user test, they are perfect for that. But um, honestly, we for now we also uh, priority the, the manual testing and what we have with uh, automatic tools, and then to to see the international best practices and example. So we are still not a searching, but we also have to create the, the best solution for the future. 
Mm -hmm. So let's hear from Jorge in Portugal. So you already, I mean, you went kind of a little bit ahead and created your own tool um, to, to make sure that you had something automatic at least. So what do you think? Is there, a, is there something you could learn that Portugal could learn from other member states or something you could do to kind of improve uh, the way you do things? Or did you maybe already create the perfect way of monitoring? No, I don't think <laughs> we don't have yet the perfect one. And uh, what was mentioned about the intellectual uh, people with the intellectual disabilities uh, is something that uh, uh, we need also to see the requirements of the of the the stand the European standard and also the web content accessibility guidelines. Uh, seems that he's very um, weak in this in this field. We have a uh, few information. In, in in these particular uh, requirements. So we need to make, in this case, more uh, studies with users and uh, the usability testing, I think, in this field is uh, very, very important. Um, one of the things that uh, uh, Portugal uh, learned about uh, all the other uh, countries and all areas of of the globe that is making uh, tests is the needs of the harmonizing the texts and the procedures. Uh, for example, uh, the procedures to inspect the what is right or what is wrong. We need to uh, have a, a common testing. Uh, not only for automatic uh, tools like we uh, start in the Y tools with the harmonized testing with the ACT rules and have tools that give you uh, the same results uh, even, even if you use different tools, but also in the uh, manual inspection, uh, we have also this kind of problem uh, if we have two experts making manual uh, testing, uh, the results is also sometimes uh, not comparable uh, because they uh, test things differently and sometimes reach uh, different uh, results. And for example, I see in the 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 guys for we say that have a document that is trusted the trusted tester that is a document that uh, uh, express what kind of uh, procedures we can do when we have manual inspection and this is something that is important to harmonize what we are uh, doing we could do in different ways, but uh, we need to get the, the same result. Uh, this is something that we need to, to work uh, about it. Uh, yep. I, uh, yep. uh, I think the, the three kind of uh, uh, testing that we are using, uh, it will be need to improve the automatic, the manual, uh, inspection and the manual inspection and uh, user testing. We need to use more, for example, in the case of Portugal, if I see the three, uh, these three uh, steps in our monitoring, uh, I see that the usability tests is, uh, is the more pure. <laughs> uh, so uh, we use few users, uh, I think we used, uh, 10 users to, to do this, this kind of job. Uh, as uh, Alexandro already says, the, the work with users is not uh, asking the opinion, is observing uh, people using, see what is the barriers. And this is a complex work and uh, we need to incorporate this kind of the, the people with disabilities in the process is not an outsider. Uh, this is Jorge, also. Jorge, I, 
I yes. love you, but we also need to include other panelists in this because now you have been speaking for a very long Definitely. time. <laughs> so, Sorry. <laughs> so I, I don't want to, I don't want to interrupt you, but I would like to ask Milan from from uh, Inclusion Europe from more of a policy perspective. What do you think? Uh, user testing is of course extremely important, but but the result, if if there is a kind of the legal requirement to say what is compliant and what is not compliant, then if if you use users and as Jorge says, there is no real way of, of determining what is correct and what is not. Isn't there always going to be a problem because users are individuals and we will get very diverse results? How do you see that? Well, of course, <laughs> the, the people that are supposed to use the uh, are very different. I think that's that's the important element and the most important perspective from our side of view is there's the there's the technical side of accessibility, let's say making the websites and products and, and apps uh visible and accessible and, and uh usable to to people who rely on different kind of um, tools to help them access them and then th that stuff that i think that's mostly about what the of course the what the conversation was about and what the directive is but there's the other uh, element to accessibility and it is actual how can people actually get through the process, get the information, how they can understand it. That's what Sufian was talking about. And that's what should be at the uh, at the forefront of everybody who's designing anything ever. Like, how do I ensure that as many as, as possible people can, can use the actual website or information or product if, can anybody use it? So I know there are different things there is not one size fits all but this should be the guiding principle it's about making sure that the information or whatever it is uh, services uh, processes that are attached with public administration are accessible in a way meaning as easy to use and and get through to as many people as possible and that can in, include all kinds of scenarios it's not just about accessibility to one kind of a person with disability it's not just about people with intellectual disabilities either i mean there's all kind of people with different experiences and and levels of knowledge and and the user experience and everything that anybody who's designing these things should should keep in mind this and just work with the how do i make this as easy as possible for anybody to use get through the process and understand the information mm -hmm. yeah it, it should be kind of self-evident i agree with you but but unfortunately that is still not the case that is uh, it's, it's interesting but so I want to, to give the floor also to Ivan Peneva from, from the Croatian um, Monitoring Agency. Your colleague Marco said that, that uh, there should be a, a common tool, something that everyone can use so that it becomes kind of um, the same results everywhere. So um, what, is, what is the real problem here? I mean, the issue of not being able to compare to us who did the review, that was a big issue because we couldn't compare. <laughs> but, but is it really a problem for, uh, for the users? I mean, the, I, I realize that uh, um, Croatia wants to know, are we doing good or bad? So we want to compare with other, with other member states. But isn't that slightly an internal um, view? I, I mean, does it really help the world that, that we can compare between member states? What's your, what's your take on that? Well, uh, first of all, uh, I would like that uh, give the word to Marco because Marco was the expert from Croatia uh, and uh, he was working with our group, uh, which was uh, going to take uh, measuring of uh, accessibility of pages of uh, public uh, services and everything else. And uh, he could give you much more uh, better information uh, that I have. I'm taking mostly policies but uh, in this case, uh, like Marco, give a hand. I would like to give him a word. Of course. Marco, please. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, well, first of all, I, I, I'm, I'm afraid that I might be misunderstood. So for now, uh, uh, being able to compare the results uh, of accessibility of various countries is not uh, for us. For us, it's just the matter of our 
interest. But I think that uh, if we are talking about the coordinated uh, activities on increasing the accessibility in the whole Europe, I think that this should be pr primarily the concern of European Union. So <clears throat> that is the bodies which are in charge for uh, uh, um, implementing uh, a comprehensive uh, accessibility policy uh, aimed at uh, uh, um, giving equal opportunities for persons with disabilities in all countries. I think that uh, this is quite instrument, uh, quite important instrument for for measurement. The other thing is that uh, from the very uh, methodology that has been uh, uh, provided to us uh, on how to implement the, the research, it was it was uh, in in the methodology. It was mentioned that uh, the uh, 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 um, testing of the accessibility of web pages should be done uh, by using the automatic tools whenever whenever possible to to maximum possible extent. Now the problem is if we have twenty or thirty different uh, accessibility checkers. We do not have any information on um, uh, which checker is suitable to use. If we have to uh, do the testing against the uh, 82 requirements or 87 requirements of the European norm EN 301.459, uh, and we do not know how to translate this because we are not all, uh, we, we haven't tried the norm. So uh, for us, it is very important uh, to recognize each of the requir requirement of the directive and uh, of the of the norm to translate it in some uh, 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 perceivable parameter and and to see whether the whether the whether the the, the certain requirement is fulfilled or not. Um, so I think that uh, it is something that should be considered uh, because I think that this is something that would help all the countries such uh, uh, such such a tool for automatic testing would help a lot of uh, I, I'm pretty sure most of, 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 of us in in our efforts to uh, do uh, uh, the proper the proper uh, um, uh, accessibility testing. Yeah, maybe, I mean, if there was a good automatic tool that was free of charge and provided to all member states, then you could use your resources to do the manual testing that is also needed for the in-depth methodology. So, I mean, it would be from a taxpayer's point of view, I think it would be nice if there was a, a tool. Um, but I, now the commission is not here, so <laughs> we cannot ask them directly. But uh, as I said previously, I don't think it's on a map, but but keep pushing. Who knows? Um, let's Let's see what they and what they do in the future. So before we uh, go to the Q&A section, I wanted to ask you, all of you, just very shortly, uh, if you can be brief, please, um, improvements when it comes to monitoring that you would like to see in the future. And now we have already talked about this, um, the automatic tools, so there's something else that either the commission could provide or the community or the industry or anyone. So what what improvements would you would you like to see to kind of facilitate and make the monitoring more efficient maybe uh, to move this forward if we start with the uh, with Hungary Jeanette uh, as for summary the best practices and uh, guideline would be great or just uh, give us a guideline especially for testing mobile application because here in um, in Hungary this is uh, only 16 uh, mobile application, but we still haven't found the perfect way, or at least close to the perfect way to, to check mobile application. And even the external uh, experts uh, we had uh, connected also couldn't give us the right uh, guidelines. So for us here in Hungary, for uh, websites, we are, I can say, relatively good. But for mobile application, we have uh, still some gaps to to fill. So for us, something for for mobile application for methodology would be very very helpful. And for the recording uh, sample, for example, as I already mentioned in in advance or previously, that. Uh, um, I will also ask the WADEX group experts how they do, and I only get the, 
one uh, question or one answer, sorry. And, um, and this would be also helpful for us how to deal with this recurring uh, sample methodology. Yeah, I think I think both of those uh, things, both the, the monitoring mobile apps and also the recurring sample is something that you uh, share with other <laughs> member states. So, so thank you for that intervention. And Jorge, if I can ask you to be brief, uh, what would you like to see from for uh, improvements for the monitoring next time you do this exercise? Yeah, yeah. Um, I elect the uh, a common testing procedure for manual inspection uh following the work of harmonization that we are doing in the automatic tools with the the tests uh, i think we need also uh some harmonized procedures for the manual uh, inspection uh this is something that in the next uh, monitoring uh we will try to to do better and also, uh, I think we need also more work with data analytics uh, or the data sets that produced by the automatic tools need to be also more harmonized and we need to work with more data analytics in these data sets. Yeah, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. so it's interesting. It's another perspective. So thank you for that, Jorge. And from Croatia, Ivan or, or Marco, uh, I don't know who wants to, to respond to this, but what would you like to see uh, in improvements except for automatic testing tools that can be harmonized? Anything else you would like to, I mean, you, you're going to have another chance. Uh, well, so. uh, um, I think that uh, meetings uh, like this one are an excellent uh, opportunity for, for us to exchange our experiences, sometimes our frustrations, sometimes uh, our ideas with our colleagues. I think that uh, um, um, maybe we should organize, uh, um, organize more uh, uh, specific uh, meetings aimed at uh, at focusing at, at, at certain at certain element of of uh, accessibility testing, I think this is very good. Uh, 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 this is very good approach. We are talking now about uh, how we have uh, conducted. And we are exchanging our experiences, uh, um, but I think that uh, maybe we need to talk more about it because it's uh, very difficult to digest uh, all our experiences in in five minutes in five minutes speech, let's say. And of course, on the other hand, uh, none of us has uh, time to go through all the reports and to read all of, all, all, all of the reports, which are, I think it's, it's um, we actually tried to read some in, in, in our office. It was very interesting to see uh, the, the, the difference of approach and uh, uh, definitely we can learn something from it. But I think that maybe uh, open forums, uh, uh, organized more frequently, uh, more focused to, uh, in, in in longer duration, and and focusing more on specific topics would be would be would be very good. Yeah, so that's a good idea, and I think that may happen in the future because the European Commission has right now a call for tender for the Accessible EU flagship initiative, and and in that they are also talking about training and <clears throat> and community of practice and so on. So so let's hope for more in. Yeah, interchange with uh, with experts and monitoring agencies in the future. So the last word I want to give to Sofiane. What would you like to see? Uh, you have already already said that more users involved, but but anything else you would like to add to kind of to for you to make sure that the uh, monitoring exercises become better from a user perspective. I would like uh, for me what I feel is it should be important not to be left out when new tech is being made for people with intellectual disability because i feel that that is what's uh, from my point of view i see people with disabilities being left out when new technology is being um is being created thank you yeah it's yeah that's unfortunately true i think that that kind of the testing procedures things are released very quickly and the technology logical development goes very fast and then kind of the, the doing the user testing before release is, is often kind of omitted or, or forgotten and, and especially for people with disabilities so so i agree that's really an important that's an important perspective thank you uh, milana i should give you the floor as well did you want to <laughs> add something i i thought i was wrapping up with with sofiana but but if you have another 
closing remarks. I will leave that I, to you. I think well. I can just add to it to extend slightly what Sofian was saying. I think it definitely involves, and from our point of view, it's always about the involvement of humans in, in this and the actual monitoring and evaluation being done with people and by people, uh, regardless of their disabilities, essentially. But for us, of course, people have intellectual disabilities as the essential bar and should be should be the cornerstone of, of this work. And again, as we said before, it's all about and not just ensuring that the website or, or service or app passes some technologically uh, standards, technological standards, let's say, but most importantly, that it serves its purpose. So it helps people to understand the information or perform a specific procedure they need to perform uh, regarding the, the public authorities or, or whatever. Mm. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So we have got quite a few questions and very little time. Uh, so, um, but I have one kind of general question for anyone who wants to respond. Do you see any spillover effects to other sectors when you are monitoring the public sector interfaces only? So did you see any kind of, did it broaden the view? Did other companies or others um, do anything because of the monitoring? Does anyone want to react on that? Nope. <laughs> I could I could in in Portugal we saw for example that the bank the private bank uh, react to the to the monitoring and uh, they don't uh, uh, belong to the to the target but they they are uh, concerned about about this issue and we saw also movements of the uh, the small and medium enterprises and uh, an initiative of the Ministry of Economy that also make some uh, badges, uh, like I mentioned to the public administration, the bronze, silver and the gold, they are using the same reference, reference to improve the um, uh web accessibility of um small and medium enterprises this is a very positive um movement okay so what i think uh from our perspective at least we see movement in the it sector because many of the suppliers want to sell to the public sector so that i think what that is kind of it's not maybe a spillover effect but but it's uh where we see the, the most movement uh, from my perspective, as at least uh, we have got quite a few comments on automatic tools not being good enough and not being, but I think we all agree that automatic tools have their pros and cons. Uh, but I think mm -hmm. all the panelists agree that we should also do manual testing. So, so it's not really uh, questions here, but um, a common set of test cases for manual testing could maybe help harmonizing the manual manual piece. That's that's a good uh, good comment as well. Um, so. Uh, what was the biggest challenge that you faced when testing websites and apps and how did you overcome those challenges or that challenge? Did anyone, did anyone encounter a challenge when testing mobile? Uh, well, mobile apps we already heard, but um, except for that, how was the testing? Did you encounter any challenges? Anyone? Um, so uh, we have tested uh, all our uh, uh, websites against the requirements of the uh, um, European norm EN301459, as it is required by methodology. Uh, some of the challenges we experienced was to translate certain requirements uh, of the norm into uh, uh, measurable uh, visual and uh, uh, understandable uh, uh, um, uh, criteria that is indicator indicator for, for if if certain requirement is uh, uh, fulfilled or not so th that was our main challenge translate the requirements uh, uh, translate the requirements of uh, norm into the uh, 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 visible and, and palpable uh, uh, um, indicator mm -hmm. 
I don't know if 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 any any other country face face this, but this is something that we discussed a lot with our with our experts. Yeah. Any of the others want to comment on that? I just reply to to Marco because, as I mentioned, we also had to translate from Hungarian to Hungarian the requirements because not everybody is such a high IT expert at public sector bodies, or I could mention also the the developers, and. Um, I think the main problem, and that could also reduce our work, if uh, also already in the education uh, could focus more on that requirements and already give the skills for developers who build mobiles or, or website to think of it. Because this, has, this is our biggest challenge here in, in Hungary, that they are very good uh, developers but they don't focus on that uh, accessibility uh, aspect of uh, creating or developing new mobile application or uh, websites. Yeah, it's true. I think that is true for, for most countries, even if I don't have statistics for each member state, but at least the ones I know of, uh, we kind of, we will stay we will keep having this problem because we do we fail in training the next generation that is really <laughs> that is kind of a really a vicious circle so so i agree we will mm -hmm. talk a little bit about that in the last session today with um uh, in the research projects that we that iwp has been involved in uh, where we try to to make sure that we include accessibility in the in the curricula in 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 universities and higher education and so on mm -hmm. so um <clears throat> Uh, yes, so we also got questions about self-assessment. So in Sweden, there is a self-assessment tool where you could try out uh, to see your your own uh, level of accessibility. I think there are many more of, of that out there, but it has also the same kind of problems as, as any automatic tool that you don't really know uh, which requirement it tests for. You don't know if it really works for the users or not. And um, and it's kind of all of these things are a good step on the way, but maybe it doesn't really solve all the all the way through to, to monitoring or, or even uh, compliance. So um, uh, we also got a question about the European Accessibility Act. Will the monitoring be the same methodology as is currently used? That is not yet uh, decided, I would say, because there will be new implementing acts uh, for the Accessibility Act and also the standards are not ready yet. So that I don't think anyone really knows that. So that is um, what the politician says that is too early. That question is too early raised, but it's a good question. Um, so, but, but let's see what, what happens uh, when we do that. So um, I will thank the uh, uh, distinguished panelists and also all the uh, great um, commitment and engagement from the audience and um, wrap up this session now uh, because we have another little uh, piece here before I let you go for to grab a cup of coffee um, because I would like to introduce our second sponsor uh, Crawford Technologies who is represented here today by Jane Black and she has promised to share their experiences focused on the development of document accessibility in the recent years which is of course very relevant for us as we have a nice connection to the accessible document specialist certification that IWP is providing uh, now so please yeah hi Susanna thank you um and I just wanted to say how pleased uh corporate technologies are to be involved in in sponsoring the event today um and I say this as uh, someone who works in Europe but for a company that's headquartered in Canada that much of the accessibility discourse is often dominated by North American voices um, and I think it's so important for us to have events like these where we can talk about what's happening with digital accessibility in Europe specifically, um, and to come together to discuss the particular issues that are faced um, in this part of the world, um, and to celebrate the amazing progress that's been made here too, like the Web Accessibility Directive. So as, as you said, with that in mind, I wanted to take a couple of minutes just to share some of what we've witnessed in the market in the last couple of years um, since the directive came into force, um, and to give everyone a bit of context to understand um, our perspective as you mentioned, we work specifically in the document accessibility space. So we typically work with organizations that are looking for software tools and software solutions to tackle large document accessibility projects. Um, and as I'm sure many of you are aware, document accessibility often lags somewhat behind 
other accessibility projects um, like website and, and platform accessibility uh, in priority in the minds of organizations. But I, I would say that up until recently, the vast majority of our work was most definitely in North America. Uh, but in the last couple of years, we've seen a huge increase um, in engagement from European organizations reaching out to us to ask us for help in addressing their document accessibility issues. Uh, and that's been from the public sector, uh, from education, from health, from social security, regional government, um, people obviously affected directly by the directive. But what's really encouraging is that we've also seen more activity from other sectors too. Um, and I think our perspective would be that it's becoming increasingly clear to all types of organizations that uh, what the direction of travel is uh, in Europe uh, with the harmonization of standards and that digital accessibility is really expected to be the norm. Um, and the Web Accessibility Directive has obviously played a significant part in cementing that message in the minds of um, organizations across Europe. So I just wanted to share that perspective today with you all, as I know we can get frustrated with sometimes with the pace of change, um, but we are definitely seeing, seeing change happen. Um, and as we look forward to the further effect of the Accessibility Act, we're confident that the snowball, as they say, will keep growing um, and gathering speed. So happy anniversary, everybody. Um, thanks again uh, for giving me the opportunity to say those few words on behalf of Corporate Technologies. Um, and to add our thoughts to the day. And Susanna, I'll hand back to you now, as I'm sure people are eager to go and get their copy. Okay, thank you, Jane. <clears throat> it was very short and sweet, so thank you very much. <clears throat> and thanks again for, for supporting this event so that we can make it free of charge for everyone. I think, as I said before, <clears throat> I think it's extremely important. And I clearly need to have something to drink, <laughs> so I'll go to the bar, but uh, stay with coffee and water. Uh, we do have a 15 minutes break now so we will meet again 11 15 uh, central european time and i believe malcolm has a beautiful um timer that shows you exactly oh now we're only on 12 minutes 20 seconds so quick coffee and see you uh, a quarter past 11 again thank you everyone Thank you.